Awesome. Uh, really excited to be here uh, with everybody. Uh, for me, it's a very special year because this is kind of marks the 10 year uh, anniversary of starting, I guess technically the first contributions were last year, like December or so. But for me, 2014 was kind of like the year when IPFS and PL and a bunch of other things became um, my full-time focus. And that was the start for of IPFS for a lot of people. Uh, so this year is like, a really good one for reflection, thinking about the progress so far and, and so on. Uh, and so some of the stuff that I'll be doing over the year is kind of like looking back and thinking about um, trajectory, uh, progress, um, what's what we've achieved in a set of these, what's left to do and whatnot. This is not that talk, so don't worry. It's not gonna be like a big arc of, of that. Uh, but I just wanted to, given that we're here to, all together in IPFS camp, uh, just reflect a bit that uh, it's been awesome to work with everybody here uh, over the last 10 years in shaping what has now become a foundational building block for so much software out there. I just keep hearing of crazy things that use CIDs or use IPFS or use like different components um, in their stacks and it, it just it keeps popping up all over the place. Uh, so we've really made something that has just percolated into the layers and layers of internet infrastructure all over the place. And you know, huge kudos to you. Um, just as a reminder, the internet is this amazingly powerful um, tool set and platform that um, runs so much of our lives today. And you, you know, used to uh, show this slide and talk about how you know, over time, more and more and more of our lives would become um, powered and run by internet applications. And therefore, um, we have to be very careful about what happens to the underlying um, stack. There's all kinds of problems that that um, uh, happen to uh, to our infrastructure. Uh, increasingly, there's even bigger and more alarming problems that could happen. Um, and now there's like really significant shifts happening happening over the last three, four years with the rise of the latest ML models and all of the provenance requirements around them and um, how we reason about training and how we reason about what's being run and so on. Um, that's a, an area where IPFS is precisely the, the thing that could help understand really what's going on in, in these stacks um, and ideally help orient them towards really good outcomes. Uh, it's very possible that um, we'll end up with an internet and, and a platform that is um, highly centralized, highly controlled, um, and then used by groups to orient um, societies in like pretty pretty terrible ways. Um, there's a possible bad future. Uh, this room, like the, the Avoidance of that and aiming towards really good outcomes will happen in rooms like this. There's going to be, you know, maybe a few thousand or a few tens of thousands of rooms like this of people um, that help shape and steer a lot of the technology that we're building towards uh, really good outcomes. So um, this stuff matters in the in the long term, and um, you know it's, it's hard to like see that progress over time, but just factor in how all of these components are, that you're building, and sometimes even the principles or the ideas or um, the the orientation of something ends up inspiring and changing how a lot of other approaches um, happen. So um, our impact as a community has been you know, massive over the last, last 10 years. Uh, cool, so one of the things I used to do in, in kind of thinking about IPFS and, and progress over time is kind of like reflect on you know, trajectory across a few verticals. Um, you know, nowadays, there's just so many directions that IPFS is going in um, that it's pretty hard to, to track these. Um, but I figured that, you know, just for fun to like look at a few of these. Uh, I used to show this kind of like browser upgrade path. Uh, we finally have made it through this. This last uh, green one was so hard. It took us like, I don't know, four years to do that. Um, now we're like in this one, which is kind of like the, the uh, final boss of uh, web, web integration. And we already have a, you know, a set of uh, good results. In fact, this slide is so old that the Brave logo is not in there. <laughs> um, but, it, but it should be. Uh, whoops, uh, my bad for not updating the slide. What's that? Is that Internet That's how old this slide is. Uh, oh yeah. Wait, does it not exist anymore? <laughs> I'm like, I guess it's Edge now. Yeah. Does it? Is it ever really gonna go away? I'm sure the code is somewhere running some critical system. Um, I used to show this like OS upgrade path. Um, I was really into uh, trying to see I a library that would then like get put into kernels. Um, that's pretty far from where we are now. Um, 
but that could happen fairly quickly if you know some projects uh, emerge in that direction. Um, mobile, mobile is hard. Uh, um, I think this one is has. There's a lot of teams that have tried this. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we've made as much progress on this as the other ones. Um, there are a bunch of improvements, but I think there's some some difficult, some very large difficulties in um, messing with a network stack in, in phones, especially with um, when you deal with like lots of the connections and whatnot. Uh, but this is one where I know a lot of us in this room really care about this. Uh, in fact, Brendan and I used to like talk a lot about uh, when are we gonna like fully uh, light this up. Um, uh, we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, the, you know, probably the biggest um, growth factor over time has been just the community. Um, and you know, even though uh, this is like a uh, smaller room than in a lot of other IPFS rooms in in history, like the community is like really massive. There's probably now tens of over ten thousand people that have touched IPFS in some way, like the, the software, and um, it just keep running into people all over the world that are like, "Oh, IPFS is so cool!" Like, um, you know, it just works for like these set of things. Um, usually, uh, the conversation turns into bug reports, and I'm like, "Please go go to GitHub, uh, pull request like, very needed and and accepted, um, and wanted." Um, but it's just kind of been amazing to see the the wide range of people around the world that have um, shaped all of this. Um, I, I should make some of these for other trajectories, so maybe I'll do that later in the year. Uh, what I wanted to kind of just focus to, um, this conversation on is in supporting the growth over time, and just I want to draw attention specifically to a set of um, public good funding tools that we'll be using um, later this year or next year. Um, so. One thing, um, so you've probably, raise your hand if you've heard of like the IPFS core fun, so cool, a few folks. So um, one of the things that we did over the last uh, year is to um, structure the funding of um, IPFS projects uh, that, that comes from PL into a separate fund um, that then will distribute uh, money out to, to various groups um, that's already um, uh, happening. Over time, we want to be able to be a good money. That we want that core router, uh, core cell, to be a good money router from a set of funders to a set of projects, and we want to involve um, a lot of community input in how we route that funding over time. And we see this thing as w just one money router in a sea of potential of other money routers in the ecosystem. Um, we think that there's like a, a lot of potential and value in creating structures that are permissionless and open in terms of um, routing uh, support uh, and infrastructure and, um, and funding uh, towards the various projects. And so think of like the IPFS um, uh, core uh, fund as one cell, one router that will have a set of opinions and a set of um, uh, directions and will take, uh, pull a set of stakeholders for input um, and will fund other things, but we want that to be kind of like um, minimal in terms of um, the, the structure and overhead so that other groups can compete with it, so that other people can go and create other cells and route um, funding in other, in other components. We want the IPFS core fund to be the main place where groups and people um, can say, oh, I want to make IPFS uh, better for my users. I don't want to think very deeply about it. Like, just please go do that. And we want the core implementation um, fund, sorry, the core, um, the core fund to be the main place where people route, um, uh, route funding that way. Uh, but over time, you can imagine you know, three, five years from now, um, other um, groups popping up that do uh, different things or other programs. And I'll give you some examples now. Um, and, and the goal here is to make this composable, right? So uh, why is that useful? It means you can plug in other systems downstream of that to allocate uh, some of that funding. Uh, raise your hand if you've heard about RetroPGF. Most people, awesome. Um, so RetroPGF is this really neat um, mechanism that came out of the Optimism community. Um, actually, we helped inspire uh, RetroPGF. Uh, some of the work in this community uh, percolated uh, down other communities and eventually uh, turned into RetroPGF. Uh, interesting historical uh, note. But the way it works is that um, it's trying to solve this kind of public goods provisioning problem, which is you have a large community of participants. Uh, people care about um, a set of things. They care about different things. They have large amounts of overlap, 
but you really are trying to figure out how to best serve the community with you know, limited resources and how to orient um, funding to the things that matter most to, um, to that community. And so this mechanism is one structure that designs a voting process that um, uh, with like these batch holders who are um, kind of well-known um, members of that community that have a lot of insight into what might be valuable. And you let you know, a set of batch holders somewhere between 10 to 100 people um, vote on a set of projects. And so you run this periodic application process. Um, in the case of Optimism, I think they do it twice a year. Um, you run this process, you um, elect a set of participants to uh, allocate the funding, you run some applications, um, people that run various, um, they do a work across the community, apply, um, you then vote on the, the batch holders vote on those uh, submissions, then funding gets distributed and you recycle. So the idea is to kind of create this just public goods funding loop um, that happens regularly over time and that can fund a lot of projects that um, uh, help build the infrastructure for, for our community. Uh, RetroPGF has been uh, extremely successful. I think they've, they're now on their fourth round, I think, or the fourth round happened? Yeah, the fourth round is about to happen. Um, interesting note, IPFS as a community and LiquidP as a, a community, both rec were recipients of RetroPGF money. And that just, that happened. Like we, our communities applied and the optimism community said, oh man, like we rely on this stuff so much, this is so awesome, have some funding please make it better, right? And like that was super cool. Like, and we're able to now take that funding and distribute it to other, to other folks. Um, now think of this cascading down another layer, right? Like we want to be able to do this kind of thing in the IPFS community itself to be able to organize how we, how we decide what we fund. And so we want to you know, be able to run some, something like this. We just ran um, a version of this in the Falcon community. Uh, so we, you know, whole, whole set of batch holders, uh, voted in a set of projects. Um, this is you know, a swath of the things that got, got um, uh, funded by, by this, this particular round um, and has been pretty successful. And over time, this will, um, this will get scaled. Part of what makes these kind of programs so successful is their, you know, their repeatability and the permissionlessness, meaning any parties can route funding towards these things um, if they're being successful. Um, and these just kind of re release some funding to a, to a set of projects. Uh, the Lip 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 is running one of these, and it's starting to, um, I think the applications are open. I don't know if they're closed yet. I should know this, but um, they're, they're, um, they're open. Um, go check them out and go um, uh, vo either, uh, yeah, if you know a project that should, be, should apply, like, uh, make sure to uh, spread the word. Uh, but we want to do something like this for the IPFS community um, eventually. Uh, and so we want to be able to run this kind of, um, uh, public goods funding structure with the community to enable you to um, give input into what are the projects that matter most for your uh, for your applications for your uh, for your systems and so on. Or if you are developing core infrastructure for the community, enable you to have a, a reward structure associated with that so you can fund it. There are so many projects out there where um, a little bit of funding goes a long way. Um, and there are many well-funded teams for whom that little bit of funding won't be uh, that useful, but maybe you can pass it on to, to other groups. Um, and yeah, I know a set of folks here participated in like the first IPFS impact evaluator um, uh, experiment, and that's one of the things that ended up uh, going through and inspiring the Red PGF um, program. Um, I'll flag another one that's cool too, but it's probably not gonna be as useful for us yet, um, which is the DRIPS project. This is one where you uh, create a whole set of dependency um, you, you navigate the dependency tree in software and you just drip money through um, the whole graph. And so if you care about you know, funding your dependencies, you just kind of flow money back and then those dependencies allocate some amount of that uh, funding to themselves and propagate the rest uh, to their dependencies and that way you go like, very deep into the tree. Really awesome vision. I really want this to work and, and be kind of scale um, and, and be very successful. But it, it will only really work once you get to very, very large numbers of funding flowing through this, because what it tends to happen with these kinds of mechanisms is the funding then spreads out uh, very thinly. So that means that you know, some projects might be getting like single dollars or cents very deep into the dependency stack. But you can see how you know, if you start pushing 
hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars through something like this, then you can actually start um, funding massive scale um, open source infrastructure. So you know, stay tuned for stuff like this. This is, I think, it's going to matter in you know five, ten years. Um, one other um, thing that I'll uh, flag is um, there's this kind of core problem around open source uh, where it's it's quite difficult, especially for for very um, technically deep projects like IPFS, where it's fairly difficult to um, cultivate uh, contribution over time, uh, especially to certain parts of the stack. Um, and so we're trying to solve that by creating a dev guild that it can create a cohort program to enable um, groups around the, the ecosystem to mentor like um, a next generation set of um, people. And so we're creating this program to enable projects to, um, uh, yeah, so th think of a kind of like Google Summer of Code, but you know, PL year of code. Um, again, kind of crypto native um, using um, those kinds of, that kind of infrastructure to uh, distribute funding. Um, and really sort of oriented to support a, a whole swath of projects. And IPFS will be one of the uh, first projects that we work with, uh, with this on. If this is successful, then you can imagine the scaling to a bunch of other separate projects within the IPFS community. So individual projects in the IPFS community could leverage this. In order to make this successful, we're gonna need to um, have a, a, a pretty good kind of like mentorship um, experience in the, in the first uh, few cohorts. Um, ideally, this would be a way to kind of um, solve what I think is the biggest and most important thing in any open source community, which is to grow the contributor base, right? So at any point in time, you, we, any open source project has vastly more goals um, to solve or you know, things to do than there are people or hours of contribution time to do them. Um, and so with that you know, ever expanding like, um, having, uh, you know, set of uh, things to do for an open source project, um, you, the community needs to be growing at pace to, um, to be able to deal with you know, all of the needs from all of the users and all the stakeholders. Um, and so this is you know, one of you know, many, many kinds of programs that we can have to help grow, um, grow the contributor base. I would love to draw your, your attention individually uh, here in this room as that being the most important problem in, um, uh, to, to help, uh, to, if we can help grow the IPFS community to uh, just grow the contributor base, um, that'll make most of the problems that you're encountering um, way easier to, to deal with because there'll be a lot more people to help, help um, uh, solve them. Uh, cool. Uh, I wanted to do a little bit of space for Q and A if, if that's uh, interesting, but also if no questions, that's also good too. Thanks. First one. So yeah, back there. What does success for IPFS look like five years from now? Um, so the way that I tend, tended to define this in the past uh, is around a you know fraction of the content in the internet that has that is addressed with CIDs. Um, I personally still kind of define it that way, and so I would say um, we want to get to some very large fraction um, eventually, uh, or you know some very large fraction of the devices on the on the internet. Um, and so I think five years is a a hard one because. It's large enough that a lot can happen, but not so big enough that you can confidently make a big S. So I would say like 10 years from now, it would be awesome to have you know, 90% of the devices in the world, or 80% you know, of the devices in the world be using IPFS in some significant way, um, you know, beyond just like loading one piece of content. Um, it would be great to be able to see um, IPFS use as the, as the main way to do provenance, you know, CIDs, to, as the main way to, to do provenance across um, software supply chain or all of those kinds of problems. Um, and I think you know, it would be great to get somewhere between 30 to 40% of the content on the, on the internet being CID uh, addressed and distributed. And that's what I would set as like the strong long-term goals. Um, I think this is a lot weirder now with ML models. So the way that um, ML is going and the way that um, Software development is going. It could very well be. I, 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 have you read like? Um, have, have people here re read um, Karpathy's essay called Software 2.0? Um, no one. Okay. This is. I think this is like one of the most interesting um, observations of what's happening with AI systems. 
um, there's a good essay from um, from Karpathy on uh, how the current ML models represent a qualitative leap in how software is built. Uh, and these things now become trained and then ingest intelligence, you generate some kind of intelligence structure that is then able to um, use a whole swath of tools or communicate with other systems directly um, for very good reasons. We're not letting these things try to communicate openly on the internet, internet using random protocols. But that is totally possible, which means that if that becomes the, a, a, um, the main way that things are built, then the way that software is written changes completely. And um, a lot of the things that we've built over the last 50 years in terms of software libraries um, become like maybe vestigial layers, but it sort of, it all becomes kind of training neural nuts. And that's like a very weird thing that could happen in the next 10 to 20 years. And so it's hard for me to like predict with high accuracy. I think like five years ago or 10 years ago, I would have said with, with very high confidence um, that it would go a certain way. I think now it's more like, oh man, this whole massive shift that we're having could take software in a totally different direction. So I don't know, it's kind of a weird answer. I know that's like not exactly what you asked, but, um, but yeah. If you were to go back 10 years to when uh, you started IPFS, would you have done anything different? Probably the coupling of certain pieces it made it just extremely difficult to do certain things. I think in 2016, 2018, like the big regret was, um, oh, I should have figured out all the IPLD stuff first, then built IPFS, because that, that caused like this huge like reshaping of the stack that, we're, that is still kind of there and, and causing problems. Um, and so I really think like, I think IPLD is one of those things that, uh, because it's so abstract and weird and different, it's still not well implemented at, you know, with like the swath of tooling that we need. And therefore, it hasn't really unlocked IPFS potential. Um, and so I think that, like a, probably prioritizing that project is one of the things that I would have, I wish I would have done a lot more of. But getting it really good. It's like one of these things where it, it's, um, there are lots of pieces in software, including things like compilers and things like um, certain network routers uh, or network protocols and whatnot that like, if you get them anywhere below 60% or 70% there, they're just not good enough and create more problems than, than they're worth. And then once you cross the threshold, you unlock like a 10 to 100x level of improvement. Um, and so I feel like we're kind of stuck there. And so, so I think improving that I think would be, would be awesome. Uh, what kind of itch are you scratching personally these days with the uh, IPFS? Um, so for me, I'm pretty excited about um, now, I guess 10 years later, coming back to the first thing that I tried doing, which was to like run all the you know, personal blog, personal site stuff. I want to I wanna finally be able to be separated from the location addressing like Quagmire. Um, I don't know if we're still, if we're, we're, we're like very close. I think like, I don't know if we're like we're fully there yet, but I think like that, that's one of the things that I personally want to be able to, um, to do. Um, probably the second is, um, there's just all of these really important static assets all over the place that I, I used to kind of like be a, an IPFS pack rat where I would just like replicate all kinds of stuff and I would take random stuff from the web and like add it to my local IPFS node and pin it for a long time. So there's probably computers that I have somewhere offline that if I connected them, suddenly some links would become alive. Um, and so I kind of want to do that at scale with Filecoin, where it's just kind of like point the Filecoin vacuum machine at like all kinds of really valuable public data and just make it all viewable through the IPFS um, link structure so that suddenly just tons of content is archived long term. So that's kind of like the main, one of the main things. Think of, you know, scientific papers, um, data sets, like that, you know, critical um, data for our, um, yeah, for our civilization. Um, yeah, papers is a big one. It's kind of baffling to me that it's 2024 and there's still paywalls through the laws that have been passed in the times. It's like, and there's like now f weird paywalls where you, <clears throat> they pretend like it's not a paywall, but it's still actually a paywall. And oh man, I, these things just have to die. Um, sorry, <laughs> whole other 
problem. Uh, cool, thanks.